stress-free trading and investing for long-term success, the beginner's guide. That's why you're all here for this video. And it is a big title. It's something big to live up to. And I understand that it is going to mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. You could break the whole title down. Stress-free could mean something different to me that it does to you. Uh, investing for the long-term success. And of course, fundamental versus technical analysis. We're gonna be looking at mostly technical analysis in today's video. So just keep that in mind as we progress. Now, as I started to put this script together, I wanted to keep it purely scientific, mathematical, and just go through technical tools. But the more I got into writing the script, the more I realized I needed to put in market psychology, trader, investor psychology, because as cliche as it is, it really does make up the vast majority of our investing decisions. But with that said, if you do wanna skip over the first part of the market psychology and trader psychology, then I leave all of the time stamps in the description down below. I highly suggest that you don't, but if you've been through it before, fair enough, move on. Now this is gonna be a long video and I'm probably gonna get a little bit passionate about certain things that I talk about, especially in the psychology space. I guess I look at it like another message that I'm just relaying to myself as I talk to the camera. It's stuff that I've gone through and things that I want to continue to improve on and hopefully I can get that across in today's video for you guys. If you have thoughts, questions, comments that come up throughout the video with something that I'm talking about, be sure to leave it in the comments section down below. I talk heavily about using a trading investing journal because that's the only way we're gonna learn from our mistakes. So during the course of this video, if something comes up with you that you think you need to learn a little bit more about, go down to the comment section, write it down there. We're not doing this for the YouTube algorithm. This one is specifically for your own benefit, for your learnings uh, and for my learning so I can understand what it is that you guys are looking more for. If I haven't explained something in enough detail, that's how we're gonna learn from this. But for the YouTube algorithm and to make this a little bit more of a lighter video, hit the subscribe button down below if you're new here. Also hit the like button because of course that does help out with the YouTube algorithm and allowing this video to be pushed out for more people to see. I'll do my best not to make it so serious and I do wanna keep it quite fun and light, but because of the nature of the game and being that it's not financial advice, yet many people do try to take this as financial advice, the serious tone comes across a little bit. So if you are new to this whole space, new to investing, these are the first videos you're seeing, this is not financial advice, it's just my experience. It is a video that I'm putting out because many people have asked for it from my channel, especially because I talk about ASX stocks and other sorts of trading and investing. So it's like a educational resource tool. I will have the video broken down into different parts and you can see those in the timestamps down below. We're going through the intro and the market psychology now, just with some background and some housekeeping. Then we'll get into the technical tools and then I'll talk about entry and exit strategies. Now, this is not a complete trading plan by any means. It's merely just a understanding and a little bit of education around each of the different aspects of a trading plan. And then the trading plan itself will come down to you and how you implement these tools into your own strategy and how that works for you. To dive just a little bit deeper into market psychology, I make a very specific point about this at the beginning of the video because it's something that you can listen to, you can look at online, you can read courses, books, get teachers for it. But the only way I have found to really learn from your own market psychology is to be playing in the market. And that comes from experience, comes from time in the market. And the reason being is that it affects our emotions when we're actually in the market with real money. We feel it when we get a loss, we feel it when we get a win, we feel it when nothing is happening. And as much as we try to make this a robotic process, we're humans at the end of the day and we still have emotions. Even if we are programming our own robot to trade for us, at some point we have to program that, that bot and it's going to come across in what we do and what we put into that system itself. So to combat the human emotions and get on top of your market psychology game, I do highly suggest getting a trading investing type journal and then just recording when you place trades or place investments, how you were feeling. I know it's like a lot more of the feely path rather than the science path, but we're trying to make a science out of this whole process. So if you can record how you're feeling and what you were thinking at that time, it, regardless of if it's a win or a loss at the other end, you can come back to that and realize what you were doing right 
all wrong and you can do something wrong and still make a profit and do something right and still make a loss. So it's a very difficult game, but what I've noticed over the long term is that it not only helps us financially, but it helps us personally and spiritually, emotionally, mentally, because it makes us tougher people in a good sense that we can overcome different problems in our life. I feel like I've only just touched the surface of market psychology, but I feel like it's time that we move on and have a look at some of the tools and other aspects of trading that you've come here for. Before I do, there is some of these books that you can pick up and learn a little bit more about yourself. Now, maybe you're not into this new age hippie dippy crap, but uh, I have found some good value from a book like this, The Values Factor, John Demartini. This one here is from WD Gann, Learn Before You Lose and Forecasting by Time Cycles. It's probably like six bucks online. There's another one here which basically goes through a lot of the patterns that we're looking at here. This one is Technical Analysis and Stock Market Profits by Richard Shawbacker. I think that's his surname. But yeah, I've used this one a lot, a lot of different patterns through here, almost everything you can think of. It's a very old book, I think maybe coming up to 100 years, 80 years, something like that. Now, the other one I've mentioned in other videos is this. This is Trading in the Shadows of the Smart Money by Gavin Holmes. And again, this one is quite expensive online, about $90, I think but it's something that I come back to all the time. It talks about volume spread analysis and some guys have mentioned that they want to know more about how to look at volume and how that works in trading. Uh, I'm not gonna get into volume in today's video because it does go a little bit further into detail, but if you're interested, this is a fantastic book. Now, the last few before I get into it because you guys have asked for books before, this one here was written by a friend of mine, How to Trade Like WD Gann, and there's a full book of all of the charts in here. Uh, just goes back. He's gone through, I think, into New York, Chicago, different libraries and sourced all of this information. Now, this isn't cheap. You can get it on his website. It's 500 bucks last time I looked, uh, but it is a fantastic tool course to go through. And the last ones are these online. Um, now, I don't have affiliate links to any of this. I'm literally just telling you because this is stuff that I've looked at. These things cost me thousands of dollars. I estimate just over 20 grand. Now it's not just the material. You can get all this material online for free. It's essentially the structure and being able to work with someone who has done this before. And that's pretty much what I was paying for. I've paid the investment back many times over, but buying books and courses and all of this sort of stuff using teachers and whatnot, it doesn't make you a better trader overnight. It may not even make you a better trader. You can get all this stuff for free and if you put it into your own plans, you can do it for free. It may just take you a bit longer. You may even do it quicker. All I'm saying is just because I'm showing books, just because there's courses and stuff online, online it doesn't mean that you'll become a better trader. So I'm just trying to preface that, that uh, books are great, but it's not the be all and end all. Now on to part two of the video and we want to look at the technical tools. Now some of your suggestions have mentioned you want to look at swing trading and what I've talked about before is ABC trading, which is similar to swing trading. Uh, uptrends, downtrends, sideways trends, and of course Fibonacci retracement tools and how they are used in a trading plan. And of course not to forget the trusty support and resistance zones, how to calculate those. Here we are at the charts and now the first question that people ask is what is this software program that I'm using and it's tradingview.com. There is a link in the description. I'm going to be using the free version today. Uh, you can do everything with the free version. So let's click through. Full featured chart is what we're going to first. And I have the S&P 500 here to demonstrate the first couple of things that we wanted to look at. Now there are ads that pop up. That's the free version. We'll just click out of all of those. The first thing we want to look at is swing setups, ABC patterns, and basically a trend following system. Now you can say that we can apply these to any of the market because we've already seen what happens next, but we're just looking for probabilities of these things to happen. It's not going to happen every time, but when we're looking for a swing following system, like a trend based system, it's much easier to go with the trend. And if you may have heard these sayings before, uh, the trend is your friend, always trade with the trend. That's the reason for it is because it's much easier to trade when there is a trending market as opposed to a sideways choppy market, which we'll look at in just a second. This is the basis of point A, a point B and a point C. And all that means is when these are getting set up, you don't know where this point C is going to be. You have an idea that this is A and B, obviously, because it's been set already by the market, but 
this point here could be our next potential C. This point here could be, and you just keep following this all the way down until you get your entry. Now this is kind of like a trading plan on its own. So I'll talk about the entry and exit points and how to calculate those a little bit later. But essentially this is what an ABC pattern setup is. While we have the Fibonacci tool out, let's discuss that briefly. And I think it's very simple to go to Google and type in Fibonacci retracement levels and what they are. Fibonacci retracement levels are horizontal lines that indicate where support and resistance are likely to occur. This is great because that's essentially all we do on the channel is look for support and resistance and these levels help us determine those in advance as well. They're based on Fibonacci numbers. Each level is associated with a percentage. The percentage is how much of a prior move the price has retraced. So to use this for an example, we stick it to the bottom, to the top, and many people just bring it back down to the bottom and then project these forward. So you're looking at all of these Fibonacci numbers on the way up. You've got 1.618, which is essentially 161% of this move from point A to point B. Just project that extra 61% above. These are very specific uh, and very well used numbers in the Fibonacci sequence the 38.2 and the 61.8%. Now you see them being expressed here as 0.618 because that's 61.8% of the 100%. Uh, that, if that's getting a little bit too confusing with all the numbers, don't worry, it will make sense the more you use them. So this is a very handy tool to project into the future where price is potentially going to see some support and resistance. Like we can see here, it hit double the previous range from the top and had a pullback, a reasonably sized pullback. Uh, so that's a good way to, to use these. You can also see here it touched on the 1.618 and you can see these touching all the way down the page. You can see it retraced 61.8% to this point here. If you take off 61.8%, you end up with 38.2. You could say that this is all random and yeah, sure, some people can go ahead with that and they enjoy that answer instead but I found great use out of these and that's why I continue to use them. Another way to use these tools which I've learned is off the A point, the B point and then project it off the C point and that also gives us some other points into the future and we can see already that it has similar levels. This is all mathematics lining up. If you did it off the point C it hit 1.618, which we know is a strong number of resistance or support, depending on which way we're trading the market. Now this point C was a 61.8% drop, so that is a great place for a point C. It's hit 50%, it's come up and landed on top of the 100%, found some support and took off again. There's nothing exact about it, but it just goes towards helping us identify these levels in advance. There's nothing in trading or investing that gives you a 100% answer. It's just a probabilities game. So I've looked at swings and ABCs and now Fibonacci retracements. If you want more information, let me know in the comments. The next few things we wanted to have a look at are support and resistance, which I think this has done a pretty good job at explaining but let's just use a horizontal tool so you can see that in a little more detail now on the s p 500 in 2011 we had a level around 1344 probably 1350 which acted as resistance multiple times although it did come above it did break back under straight away so that's a sign of weakness from what i've known in my past of trading it's come back again to test it and you can see in a very fine detail that it has not closed above this level. It tried it once and then the market couldn't close above it. So we're seeing here a triple top, you could call this a head and shoulders and then a immediate reversal from that point. It took a couple of weeks because each of these bars are weeks and basically from that point it's formed another low before it took off. So this wasn't the final top but it was a very tradable range using resistance. Now we can flip that over and find some support using this level. Let's leave it where it is because this is showing up quite well. We've got a support level at that exact point C that we just used before for the Fibonacci retracement tool. That's generally how the markets work. Uh, resistance becomes support later on 
and support can become resistance if this was to break under it and come back up and test it. You might ask, why did it break under and then come above? Like I said, these things are just probabilities and you could expect or you could look for this level to become support. But if it doesn't, then that's also another signal for you that maybe the market isn't working out the way it should be. It's more like you're using it as, as probabilities measure. And if it doesn't happen, then you can almost expect that the opposite should happen as well. So even when you're wrong, you can be right if you're playing the market in this way. So that's support and resistance using the horizontal line. Now, the last thing we wanted to cover was uptrends, downtrends, sideways. I think you can pretty much see that this is a very clear uptrend from the 2009 low. All an uptrend is, is higher highs and higher lows. Now for a downtrend, it's just the reverse. It's lower highs, lower lows, and you don't wanna be trading against the trend if you're a long-term investor. Now, as for a sideways market, you could almost consider this on a large scale to be a sideways market from around 1997 through to when it broke through the high in 2013. Now they're huge ranges and yes, there's plenty of tradable opportunity in there. Even for an investment point of view, you could hold this for a few years, get out of your, your investments and then purchase back in again in 2002. You got many years there that you could hold something and still get some good gains. But for the point of looking at a pattern, then this is also looking at a sideways range. If we go back to the 1960s and 70s, this was a pretty clear sideways pattern, although there were obviously good trading ranges in there and good investments to be had. You can see here from around 1963 until it broke out decisively, probably around 1982, you could argue that it was 1980. So that's, that's a solid 17 years where this market basically just bounced between support and resistance until it finally found some strength and just blasted on from that point. Just as a side note, that could happen again. We are led to believe that markets should always go up and look in the long term after that 17 year period it did. But if you got in in 1968 or you know 1969, then you would have to wait a long time. So that's just a side note that these things can happen and you could go sideways for, for many, many years, even decades in this case. But we're just looking for a pattern in this case to explain and show an example. And this is a nice, clean, sideways ranging pattern, which is a great trading range. Lastly, in part three, I'll talk about how to set up the trading plan and using things like your stop losses, entry points, take profit targets and looking at your risk and reward. Now, finally, let's have a look at entry, exit and take profit levels. Now I'm gonna use this, this is just cleaner and easier to make an example of and it does get a little more tricky than this. So don't expect them all to be this easy because it's trading, nothing is that simple, but we can try and make our trading plans as simple as possible. Now I'm using this low, I'm using this high because this would have come in as I'm watching the data and we've got a low, this is an inside bar, which we'll talk about in other videos, another low, another low. And we're just going to basically try and trade the long position off each of these bars. So as these weeks came out, because we're on weekly bars, then we would just look to place our orders at this point, at the high above the, the bar itself. And we can see the next week, it didn't break the high. The following week, we would try again and it didn't break the high. The next week, this is how it works. We're just continuing to place our trades and wait for an entry. There's a lot of patience in here. This is about one, two, three, probably three and a half weeks until we got an entry using this system right here. So we've got our orders in here. We're waiting to the, for the break of this high because that is our entry point. We wanna see the trend continue in the direction that we are trying to trade it. That's why we're waiting for these bars to break on the high. That's why we're not buying on the lows because we could have just bought here, but then the market continues down. So we're waiting for a confirmation in the trend continuing. We're entering underneath this level of the 38%. So we're pretty much under 30%. Now risk and reward comes in, which means if we're entering below 33%, then we wanna at least get one for one on our trade, probably more like two to one and hopefully three to one. Reason being is if we have bigger rewards and smaller risks, then we can afford to be wrong a lot more times than we are right and still make a very good profit. I think this is something that new traders don't understand and I see it in my comments section, they're expecting to take all the trades and make all of the profits and in reality, it does not happen like that. And for me personally, I would rather take less positions 
and have a bigger upside potential with a smaller risk. And some traders do it differently. They want to, they don't mind having a reasonable size risk and they're only looking to make a similar sort of reward, but they need to be right so many more times. I don't like those odds for me. I think I'll be right a few less times, but I'll be right in bigger cases. So that's the way I trade it. There's so many different setups like this and that is something that new people especially don't understand. Um, so really take the time to understand this. This is your risk management. You're managing your portfolio. This is the do or die, make or break section of your portfolio. If you don't understand how these numbers work of how you can be right and wrong different amounts of times and still win or lose, uh, you will lose all your money eventually. Maybe not in the short term, but if you continue with it, it's bound to happen because it's just maths. So here's just a quick little trade example. My entry point is above the bar as it breaks the high and my exit is below the bar. If I'm wrong, I wanna get out of this point right here. So the take profit is double. I wanna get this risk reward ratio of two. I'm risking 61 points here and my target is 122 points. So obviously we can see on this trade that we can have more, but I'm happy with this, a two to one. I think that's a pretty good uh, risk to reward. So in a nutshell, that's how a simple trade is placed. This took uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 weeks until there was a profit taken. And there was a little scary time here for one, two, maybe three weeks as the market started to come back on your trade. And you would have been sitting in a paper loss for probably a few days until it took off again. This is where the market psychology really plays an important part because you just don't know how you're going to feel while you're sitting in a trade like that. So that's a full wrap up of the video today. I've tried to give you as much information as I can at a very intro sort of level and still left you with something that you can take away and start to implement and back test for yourself. So I know it's a very long video. Use the timestamps after you've watched it through fully once and let me know in the comments down below if there's anything else you want to understand about this video, uh, these technical tools, how to set up your own investment plans and uh, we can leave it for another video as well in this series. So be sure to save this video in your watch list to come back for future reference. So that's part one guys. I know there's a lot of things still to cover when it comes to trading and investing stress-free for the long term. Be sure to subscribe down below and like the video up. I've got a link in the description to a Discord group that I am with. These guys have been trading and investing for many years now. The community is amazing and it's a great place to go and join if you are looking to improve your skills in the space of investing and trading. As I said, link is in the description. It's free to join. There is a premium section to the group if you want to upskill yourself in that sense, but there is so much free content in that group. It's amazing. You can get through all of these sorts of technical tools, plus talk to other people in a like-minded space. As I said, it's just a suggestion if you want to further your knowledge in this space. I've also got the links to the website I was just using in the description down below. I'll wrap that video up there. I really appreciate you guys sticking around and learning more about this space on investing and trading. Be sure to like the video, subscribe down below. You can catch me on Instagram or in the Discord group. And I'll see you guys at the next video. Remember, until then, have more fun and get more done.